A few weeks ago, I discussed The Last of Us and how it tackled the tough challenge of getting the player attached to a character with complex motivations. In that episode, I feel like I kind of downplayed the effect that featureless character designs can have in our favorite games. So today, I wanted to take a look at the use of voiceless protagonists in gaming and whether or not they add or detract from the entire experience. At first glance, it might feel kind of cheap that the storyteller simply said, you know what, just make the character voiceless and call it a day but it's a deliberate sacrifice that is intended to enhance the aspects of what would otherwise be a pretty great game. Instead of having the character show his excitement through voice lines or facial animations, it gets out of the way and just lets you, the player, experience it. Even Mrs. Pac-Man takes away from the gameplay for just a brief moment when it shows little cutscenes of a cute story unfolding. By restraining itself and not taking the time to remind you what the character feels, you can just get more engrossed into the setting itself. This also lets the player roleplay a bit. The character doesn't have to be you. You can be whatever you want it to be. Many games allow you the freedom to cater that experience however you see fit. The more freedom, the better, usually. But with every great idea, there are reasons why it doesn't work. And the featureless protagonist has seen a lot of flack in recent years because of their contrived nature. It often feels like a forced limitation on the player that doesn't really add anything to the experience. They were just put there because their favorite alien shooter didn't have a voice protagonist either. The traps are almost impossible to not fall into. Such a strong limitation on your story makes it really easy to let yourself get caught into this world of endless cliché. When your character doesn't have a voice, the chances are pretty good that they won't have any core values either, which means it's pretty tough to create an antagonist that challenges these values without turning them into some super evil megalomaniac. The fate of the world is at stake, time to call our faceless, nameless hero to save it, kicking off yet another hero's journey. If there's nothing personal to overcome, then you'll need to write in some other character that does have a strong personal motivation for your mission to succeed. Let's get to the fun part of the video. My favorite and least favorite uses of the featureless character. The first is an example I've been dancing around all video, Half-Life. Half-Life is all about the setting and the way that you interact with that setting. The Black Mesa facility is full of life, which is pretty funny considering there's a lot of dead guys in it right now, with environments ranging from tight corridors to open tram sections that keep the player engaged with every single new challenge. But the real beauty starts at the beginning of the game. I've been saying throughout this whole video that you are the character, but that isn't necessarily true. Gordon Freeman is an alternate dimension version of you that got a PhD and works in this research facility. And the opening sequence slowly takes you through the entire facility and what the daily grind of that work is like for you, giving you plenty of time to be alone with your thoughts. Where am I? Who am I? How did I get here? It lets the player ask these questions to himself and answers them in vague enough terms so that you can fill the blanks as they walk into the test chamber and create the real ride that they'll be embarking on soon enough. I wanted to talk about the tram sequence in my hook video, but I knew I was gonna make a video that showcases Half-Life and Fallout next, and I didn't want you all to think that I'm just some kind of one-trick pony. Speaking of one-trick ponies, let's talk about Fallout 3 and Skyrim. Both of these games follow pretty similar formulas. You're thrust into a world and now you have to make a name for yourself within this huge setting, and they give you the freedom to do so. Want to go through the game as a pacifist? Sure, just level up stealth and lockpick everything. Or you could go in guns blazing, that's pretty cool too. Don't get me wrong, Half-Life is a phenomenal experience, but Bethesda effectively improves on the depth and the freedom of its RPG systems by letting you be literally anybody. It wouldn't really make any sense having a charisma tree if your main character was a rough and tumble dude that didn't take no for an answer. Well, Sawyer's actually a pretty great character, but you know what I mean, right? Who are these people? Well, gee, I didn't have time to ask that with Froger on fire and all. Let's talk about some weaker featureless characters by bringing it back to the Half-Life franchise. Half-Life 2 kind of tries to explain Gordon's disability with a clever plot device, but it just feels contrived and forced into the game. With sequels, it's only natural for the developers to want to expand on the world and its characters. So how do you expand on Gordon's character and his place in the world? By making him the face of a rebellion, I guess. Suddenly, Gordon is the main character of some epic story instead of a dude trying to find out how to kill a bunch of aliens. Valve tries to shove a square peg into a round hole and even gives you a companion character named Alex that does pretty much nothing but remind you that you don't talk. And lastly, I have a big bone to pick with The Legend of Zelda, or at least the console Zelda titles. 
Link has remained voiceless through the sheer force of nostalgia and tradition. It made perfect sense back when we didn't have the budget or the technology to give him a voice or character depth, but it doesn't add anything and we should take a serious look why. It actively works against every pro I made earlier in this video, and I swear it wasn't on purpose. Link was actually the last character I thought of when I was brainstorming for this video. Link has his own personality. He gets frustrated, angry, and excited throughout his adventures. The game might as well have a flashing message on screen that says, hey, hey, you should be excited here, bro. Link just keeps getting in the way of the player. The game is also linear with scattered side quests and end game challenges that distract the player from the actual progression and pacing of the epic story. Speaking of the epic story, they feel the need to stop and tell us one, putting the focus of the story on the struggle between light and dark and Link's <sighs> heroic journey to save the kingdom of Hyrule. On their own, these don't really make a bad game, but The Legend of Zelda has been held back by old school practices and refuses to innovate. The good news is, is that the newest one looks like it's going to be opening up the world a lot more. So at least it's improving, right? And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this video. Thank you so much for watching and make sure you subscribe to the channel and follow me on Twitter so you can keep up to date with the new episodes of the little things that come out every week. So until next time, my name is Tyler Gesselman, and as always, it's been a pleasure.